everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Simply Celicia and I am like down and ready for a Raid My Watch Q part three. Um, so this is the third one. We're going to go over um, like K-dramas and anime and things that I've been watching that I enjoyed and some things that I've watched that I didn't really like. Um, but you know, still kind of float out there, you know, sometimes something I don't like it would be something that's a good match for someone else. So um, this is just kind of like my watch, <laughs> my whole like little watch queue of things that I was like focused on um, since April. So <laughs> this is like kind of like the quarantine watch list. What was on my, you know, mind. I did like the whole like Tiger King and stuff like that. Like me and my roommate binged that entire show the day it came out. So that was a journey. <laughs> uh, definitely part of some, something that we got into. But also there were so many other dramas in the between time since kind of like the last little video I did. So in the last video I remember saying that I wanted to get into Itaewon class and I did. I have watched it twice. <laughs> so I watched it in um, April and then um, I watched it again like a few months ago because I was visiting my family and I got my dad into it and he really liked it. So um, definitely I really really liked Itaewon class. I think it's a good little kind of like revenge drama slash you know just like progressive in terms of dramas. You know the representation is there and um, all the characters are really nice and diverse and fun and I just really liked it. Um, it is heavy a lot of the times. Um, um, yeah, like, it, it's kind of hard to think about sometimes, but it's not as intense as this next drama that I watched by the name of Extracurricular, which I watched in May. Uh, that is a lot darker <laughs> and heavier, um, but also very, very good, and I would be interested in seeing that one getting a second season. It's more of, like, the nitty-gritty dark side of, you know, things that might be happening um, in day-to-day -day life. So there's like sex workers and you know all that kind of stuff. Uh, it gets much deeper into you know kind of like the alternative ways people make money and you know different kind of outright like backstabbing and blah blah blah. So um, that's a lot more <laughs> like darker than I would say Itaewon class. Itaewon class is still you know dark and I guess typical for you know how you would expect the setup to be but it's more in terms of like companies um and like monopolies and stuff kind of beating down on the little guy kind of thing um so a lot more stomachable <laughs> than maybe extracurricular could be to some audiences I think they're both great I like dark dramas and stuff like that so I um enjoyed them in terms of um uh, something that I'm currently watching that also, you know, can get into some um, dark themes, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't always go too far, but it is, it, <laughs> they try to maintain some amusement, but, you know, the reality of the situation, if you have ever personally been in the situation or known people from, you know, these kinds of backgrounds, um, it, it's rough. It's like stuff like the U.S. So, uh, show Shameless, um, you know, where you have like the themes of, you know, experiencing poverty and, you know, just kind of, you know, mental health issues and just all kinds of things where, you know, you go through like, you know, the effects of teen pregnancy, the effects of alcoholism, the effects of all the stuff on a family. And, um, you know, their relationships with other people that come in and out of their lives and stuff like that, and it is very good. Um, but also, yeah, there are things that are dark, and then there are things that are dark that you just kind of try to make light of for the sake of entertainment, but you know that in reality, like, this is not good, rosy time all the time. Um, I do enjoy those kinds of, you know, dramas. Um, and, you know, I've been on both ends of that, like, personally, so, like, I get it. Um, let's see. What else did I watch? In May, I also watched, I was trying to get back into anime, so I watched Demon Slayer, and I really enjoyed it, and I'm very excited to get to more of it. I really, really liked it. I think it was really beautiful. Um, so if you guys are into those kinds of, like, fighting demons, <laughs> 
not really like it's not like attack on titan -y or anything like that i know that's kind of like a tentpole for people right now but um it's not like that it's but it's not on like your typical anime setup either like um they just have really good characters and i really like the way they build it up it's not like an overnight thing and you know they just have very strong kind of like action sequences and everything else i just really uh, like that one in june there were two more things that i watched one anime animated movie um and then there is um another anime i watched so a whisker away i watched on netflix and honestly i can't remember much about it but i just remember it's about cats <laughs> Um, and it was just like a cute little like movie to watch um, so I definitely if you guys are into if you are into cats go watch A Whisker Away it's pretty cute um, I also watched uh, Wotokoi Love is Hard for Otaku because it just sounded really funny it was really funny it just <laughs> I really like um, satire and stuff like that so like just it's very funny if you are, you know, deep into like anime or have been an anime fan for a long time and like you're into all of like the cosplaying and, you know, reading manga and everything and you know, that's just such a big part of your life for a while. You'll find plenty to laugh about um, with this anime. Um, and also if you like romance, it is a romance anime, so it is very... Um, funny. It's very aware that it is a romance anime and kind of picks at some of those elements, so it's really fun. Um, in July, I uh, was re-watching Avatar The Last Airbender because it was on Netflix. I love Avatar The Last Airbender. I will never stop telling people to watch it. It's so good. Um, uh, Legend of Korra was coming, so that is why I wanted to rewatch Avatar The Last Airbender again. <laughs> this is like the third or fourth time. Um, before watching The Legend of Korra. So, um, months after <laughs> I got to Legend of Korra, but I did watch that one as well. Um, I don't know if I liked Legend of Korra, like, as much as I liked, um, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender, but you know what? I did grow up with Avatar The Last Airbender, and there is, you know, a nostalgia element and just kind of, like, the, the way the story was done. I liked more than The Legend of Korra, but I didn't dislike The Legend of Korra. Clearly, I watched it and finished it, and I found things that I like about it. Um, I'm not sure what my favorite season is, because I feel like in the first season of The Legend of Korra, I really, like, I do really like the characters, and I like the setup, um, and then I'm picky and choosy about the plot from then on. I think they came on strong and they have such amazing like fight sequences and um you know there's nice there's beautiful like subtle character building and stuff like that and I really liked um you know getting some information on you know kind of like the creation and backstory of Avatar like I thought that was super cool but um in terms of the directions that some of their like, relationships go in terms, of, like, I don't know, like, I feel like they forget that they were friends, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, it's weird to me, like, they just end up spending all this time apart, and also, um, you know, they, they just don't seem, they, they are touted as being close, but they don't seem that close because they're just very basic things that they don't seem to, like, click together on. Or, you know, despite knowing each other for this long period of time and having a teamwork aspect, it's just one of those things where it's like, there's just little things that don't match up in terms of, like, if you guys are so close and things are, you know, working out so well, then how are you not questioning the scenario that is happening? I don't understand why you wouldn't question that. <laughs> that kind of stuff. That's what's going on. That made me uh, question Korra. But overall, I just still enjoy the entire Avatar world. I'm here for the ride, and it was a good time. Um, moving, on, moving back to um, July... I watched, I also watched um, Put Your Head on My Shoulder, and I watched season two of ReZero, starting A Life in Another World. Um, Put Your Head on My Shoulder was cute. I had just a quick watch, <laughs> just kind of zoomed through it. Um, it was fun. You know, your typical kind of like little romance, K-drama. It's one of those things where after you just like, <laughs> like, 
K-dramas and anime, it's kind of one of those things where it's like after you watch a few of either the main, you know, popular animes or at least like by the time you watch three to five animes, you've watched most of them. Um, <laughs> it's just about what tropes do you like <laughs> or, you know, how do they twist said tropes and stuff like that from there. That's pretty much most entertainment, to be honest with you. Um, so I just really, there are tropes that I love and I will just keep watching it even though it's like, wow, this is the 25th time I've watched this drama with different characters in a slightly different scenario, but I'm in love, <laughs> like that kind of thing. So like, I am totally for it. Um, ReZero, I need to start reading that because I am officially like lost and having a hard time like, focusing and like understanding what is happening in that anime. I really really like it um and I feel like I just need to kind of read it to maybe get more context and kind of fill in some of the dots because that one can be a complicated one to follow uh for me because I don't really pay attention to all the subtext well nor do I want to rewatch it like two or three times um I just really really liked the first season so it's kind of one of those things where it's like well maybe I need to switch over and read them first and then like as the anime kind of gets going and catches up if it's caught up at all or if it's off on its own thing I see I don't know um I would then go back <laughs> and watch that um so we'll see August and when I got to August I rewatched Moesha that was also when I was watching Legend of Korra um I watched Toradora I watched Bloom Into You that was an emotional month <laughs> um Legend of Korra yeah I already talked about Moesha it was just a fun rewatch I really loved the theme song growing up it was something that I watched as a kid and then you know we had the whole you know Black Lives Matter and a lot of companies are just trying to like placate the demand and stuff like that put a little band-aid on you know maybe how they represent kind of different cultures so you know we got the whole like black stories black television stuff on a lot of platforms um and Moesha and the Parkers and girlfriends and stuff came up with that and like sister sister for uh Netflix so I've been taking advantage of that um it is <laughs> so aggravating to watch because I just she was so annoying <laughs> She was annoying. I remember hating the dad then. I still hate the dad. You know, there's just little like themes where they, there's just themes that just don't age well. And it was stuff that it's like, didn't really make me like, like anybody <laughs> back then. Um, but also, you know, it's still something that's precious and near and dear, you know, it's dated, <laughs> but it is still something that I really enjoyed and you know a vibe that I wanted with my friends like growing up like where's our cafe that we can go to and hang out with and you know like where or where's my Dell where's like all this stuff like all these kind of scenarios is familiar to me but also you know different and very like California so it was very fun to like rewatch that and also have other friends rewatching it so that we can message each other and be like now what did Moesha say today <laughs> like she's so annoying stuff like that um it's a fun slightly hate watchy but also <laughs> just great memories for me um and Toradora was so cute it was such a cute little romance anime and I really liked the way that the romance was done and just kind of like how the characters related to each other and it's just really cute so once again I, I really like romance anime <laughs> so <laughs> I really love that Bloom Into You was so good it was so beautiful like just uh, the way it is created and you know the subtleties as it develops and you know you're dealing with a character that you know has depression and um, I, I believe there's other characters that are more kind of like on the asexual spectrum and stuff like that um, it's another romance it is a girl slash girl romance so um, it's just really good. <laughs> like it was just really good. I really love like Yaoi and Yuri to be honest with you and I was just really impressed with this one. I liked you know the kind of way the story started to go. Um, there are plenty of things that I find 
annoying about you know these genres because in my like love is love um but and sometimes like some of the themes or tropes are just kind of irritating but I didn't feel very irritated about some of the tropes that are in Bloom Into You and I felt that there was a lot that was needing to be said in that anime that was really well done so definitely <laughs> definitely check it out if you can month after that I started queuing up Sister Sister I still haven't watched Sister Sister but I will be <laughs> um I queued up King of the Eternal Monarch, but I dropped it. I, it just didn't get me. Like, within by episode two, I was just not, like, like, I just wasn't, like, linking onto it. So I think I just wasn't ready for it or it just wasn't hitting, like, the mood that I was looking for right then and there. So I just dropped it for now. Maybe I will revisit it. Um, but for then on, they had uh, The Social Dilemma on Netflix, which was interesting a little over acted a little overdone or you know over a little too overarching and not really getting into kind of like the like crossroads details that I wish it did because I think it would have made the argument even stronger um but I think it is a good start and it is a good little um reminder for people that like hey be wary and you know responsible about the way that you are interacting with social media um, for there, I watched Ratchet, which is a, was, it was around, um, Nurse Ratchet from, like, the one who flew over the cuckoo's nest. It was kind of, like, her origin story. Very dark. <laughs> Very dark. Violent, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and a bit triggering, to be honest. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, very, very, very dark themes. Um, so if that, you know, definitely check your trigger warnings for things like that, um, before you start it, if it is something that you're interested in. But it is a good, like, little Halloween theme, so if you want to wait until Halloween comes around again or something like that, um, I was starting to get into, like, the spoopy moods, so, um, I definitely watched that. It wasn't always an easy watch. Uh, there were times where I had to, you know, like, take a break. But, um, overall, I think they did pretty good, and I liked the, um, I really liked, like, the color <laughs> of it, like, the way it was edited and the way, um, uh, the characters were put together, but also just the general, like, color palette of the show. I really liked that. Um, from then on, I, <laughs> right after watching Ratchet, I watched The Devil all the time. Another very dark, 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 um, triggering, once again, check your trigger warnings for that um kind of film but it was also very well done interesting um yes dark <laughs> we'll move on from that one um I did a whole switch once we hit October into like happier times because I went and did went into Enola Holmes which I really liked um Great British Bake Off had another season so I watched that um I got into Yashihime Princess Half Demon which is you know the second kind of in the lines of like the Inuyasha I watched Inuyasha growing up um Inuyasha is how I found k-pop and stuff like that so like I'm gonna watch the sequel and I've been happy with it. I am still currently watching it. I'm letting some of the episodes build up. I am going to probably like binge through some of them maybe today actually. Um, but I have been enjoying it. I've been enjoying like the throwbacks. Unfortunately, um, one of the original voice actors for Moroku for like the English casting passed away, which is very unfortunate. And, you know, I just, it just makes me think about like all the characters that he voiced and, you know, I just feel, uh, there's, there's a solemnness to it because he did such great work and Moroku <laughs> was somebody that just really cracked me up as a kid. Um, even though <laughs> like these days his character would be very side-eyed. Um, but I just, you know, I have fond memories and I'm just proud of his work and also just, you know, happy to have had the time with him that we did have. I wish we had more, but I can just like, you know, rest in peace overall. So, um... I've just been really enjoying kind of reliving those feelings and, you know, reliving, you know, the references to, you know, when I watched the original and I watched all the movies. I had like the video games and stuff. So like I was really into Inuyasha and I read the manga and all that. So um, it just feels, it feels like home. <laughs> 
Um, I rewatched Cabinary of the Iron Fortress and I watched the movie and I just really like the style, the steampunk nature of it. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and from then on, at the end of October-ish, I started Start Up, which I just finished yesterday. <laughs> so I'm really happy with that drama. It was really cute. Another romance, another... It's about, like, technology and stuff like that. Um, if you liked... Sorry, I got a hiccup. <sighs> if you liked My Whole Little Love, You Will Like Start Up is my assumption. Um, so definitely check it out. Um, I watched Blood of Zeus. That was like a one day watch. I just kind of wanted to like binge out on something. <laughs> so, um, I watched that one and, you know, I really like Greek mythology and stuff. So I just enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting. Um, I watched Violet Evergarden, which might be one of my favorite watches of the year. Uh, that was super sad. It was so sad. Like, it just reached in and grabbed my heart, like, shook it around. But it is so good. Like, I really like it. It's very beautifully animated and very heartfelt. Um, so, uh, definitely suggest that one as, like, one of my top watches of the year. Um, after that, I did, like, a whole genre flip, and I watched Kake Guru which is an anime that was about like gambling and things like that it is really weird I don't know I kind of think of it as like the food wars of gambling not quite as intensely like sexual but um, there's definitely some weird things and it's it's an odd one but it was it was one of those animes that you watch and you're like, why am I watching this again? Like, why? How do they make gambling so entertaining? <laughs> and like, these characters are so odd. Um, but that's kind of like the long list of what I have watched since my last Raid My Watch queue. Um, Itaewon Class, Bloom Into You, Violet Evergarden our top, um, probably the top three. Um, but I want to add two more. So what would I put after that? Those are so, so much my top three. Um, I'd probably put, um, uh, check out Yashihime if you know about Inuyasha for sure. Um, I don't think you'll be, uh, that disappointed. And, uh, Demon Slayer. Definitely check that out. Um, in terms of, like, new animes here. We'll tack those on as the new animes that you should check out if you haven't yet. Um, the Demon Slayer has been pretty popular for a while though. Um, but that is kind of like my <laughs> wrap up. I just kind of wanted to get them all out there. Um, even some of the ones I dropped like King of the Eternal Monarch, there are still people who absolutely love that one and I hope that, um, you do if you check it out. <laughs> but anybody else, please put your watch, you know, kind of like, what have you been watching? What do you suggest down in the comments down below? So let's help us <laughs> load up our cues. So we have endless cues of things that who knows if we'll watch it, when we'll watch it. Um, but I hope that you guys find something that you like in here and I will update the drama recommendations link that I will put in the description down below so that you guys can check back and look at everything that I have suggested and kind of put together um, and where to view it stuff like that uh, down in the description so thanks for coming through another kind of long video but I had a lot that I watched because you know what we were inside <laughs> we were inside like all year so this is what I did <laughs> if you like what I do on this channel please like please comment please subscribe share it with a friend and I'll see you guys next time don't forget to drop your watch you know stuff below and I'll see you bye